Really? Yeah. It, it, I, I think that would be a shock to yeah. a lot of people thinking, oh, this 12 volt fridge is going to be a lot less uh, power usage. Hey, just bought this great new fifth wheel or travel trailer and it's got a residential fridge. My battery will only last two or three hours. What do I do? That the voltage is going to drop too far, that the inverter is going to shut down prematurely. That is the ultimate reason why, one, your battery's fell. I have this. I'm trying to do this. How much battery do I need? I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.live. We have our RV lithium battery expert back today. Yes, Harrison from Enduro Power Batteries is back. We are in the middle of a massive RV lithium battery upgrade and that video is still coming. We have a whole series on it, so make sure you subscribe so you catch that. Today is all about what we didn't know about RV lithium batteries and you probably don't know either. Like, why does your residential refrigerator in your RV die after just a few hours? What's the difference between lead acid, AGM, and lithium batteries? How many lithium batteries do you need? how to properly wire your RV lithium batteries, and three best practices for adding lithium batteries to your RV if you want to do it, DIY, and so much more. What are the like considerations uh, when someone, like you mentioned, buys a fifth wheel, they're brand new to RVing, and, you know, but then they know they need a battery upgrade. And I should say, I guess it should also back up and say that the manufacturers are starting to catch on, sometimes put in lithium, sometimes put in two batteries, but they're not typically what you need, you know, to run that residential refrigerator, uh, to certainly, obviously, air conditioning is like way out of the question for a lot of the basic fifth wheels. How, do, how does the typical RVer start to figure that out? That's a great question. So, I would say one of the most common calls that we get over the past year and it'll continue on is there's been kind of a, a, a switch to 12 volt RV fridges so no no longer an absorption fridge which is propane and electric um, I'm talking about straight 12 volt um, and then also you see a lot of times a fifth wheel is pretty common to be standard a residential refrigerator um, both of those fridges consume about the same amount of amperage when you convert it down to DC which is about anywhere from six to 7.5 amps per hour. Really? And, yeah. It, it, I, I think that would be a shock to yeah. a lot of people thinking, oh, this 12 volt fridge is going to be a lot less uh, power usage than uh, like 120. Yeah, it sounds very so. efficient. Um, usually when you have a 12 volt fridge, they will put a solar panel on the roof, which will, for the most part, offset your consumption. However, you get into the winter months and you're in the middle of the U.S., that one panel um, usually is not going to cover cover your consumption but I'll give you give it to you this way maybe we'll do a little whiteboard as well to show you visually is um, if you're consuming roughly seven amps per hour to run your fridge whether it's 12 volts or a uh, residential fridge you do that by by 10 70 so you're about 80 84 amp hours in a 12 hour period okay so um, 84 amp hours now let's take the standard lead acid battery that most dealers give you when you pull off the lot, hey, thanks for your VRV, got a brand new battery in it for you. That typical battery has 80 amp hours in that battery. Okay. Of which, if you maintain it properly, you should only discharge at 50%. Right. So you really only have about 40-ish amp hours to use. Your fridge alone, at night, you have no solar running, is going to run through that battery in half the night and then you're going to start damaging the battery the second half of the night and then six to 12 months later you're looking to buy new batteries. So that is the ultimate reason why one, your batteries fell because they aren't big enough to support the electronics in your rig. Uh, here we want to talk about the difference in voltage profiles between a lead acid AGM battery and a lithium lithium iron phosphate battery that we have here. So we have two line graphs and this is I think a very good way for you to understand the difference in the voltage profiles. Uh, one that's most noticeably is you see a lead acid AGM battery starts off at 12.8 volts. This one it's fully charged, not on the charger, sitting there after it's fully charged. 
it'll read 12.8 volts. A lithium batteries, on the other hand, when it's fully charged, not on the charger in resting state, will be right around 13.6 volts. So you already can see there's a slight advantage that it's a slightly higher voltage. Now these are still both 12 volt batteries. Um, they're going to run into your 12 volt appliances just fine, even though the voltage is slightly different. So you take this 12.8 volts that was fully charged lead acid, you go across here, 12.8 hits the, the curve on this graph way out here. 12.8 volts in a lithium battery is about 20% of the battery left. So you're spending 80% of your discharge life up above even at the highest point of your AGMs and lead acids. This is a big deal, especially for anybody that's running an inverter. An inverter requires a certain level of voltage. At some point with a lead acid AGM, you're gonna pass a point that the voltage is gonna to drop too far that the inverter is gonna shut down prematurely, even though you might have, still have energy left in the battery. Um, with the lithium, since your voltage is staying pretty constant up here above 13 volts for most of its discharge life, your inverter is going to run much longer than in the scenario here where the voltage is gonna drop. So big, big advantage to lithium over uh, lead acid when it comes to running inverters. Um, but this is, uh, the other thing that uh, I'd like to point out here, another reason to consider a battery monitor with a shunt is we can no longer look at voltage 12.8, 12.3, 12 volts, 12 volts being 50% depth of discharge. Um, that was easy to do on this chemistry. But in a lithium, as you can see, 50% is over here. That voltage is literally between 13.2 and 13.1 volts. So. How are we going to know? Even myself, an expert, and I look at batteries all, all day long, I have a good guess, I can educated guess, but really knowing where I am on 13.2 to 13.1 here is really tough. So we put a battery monitor with a shunt in our system, and that takes care of the plus and minuses in and out of the battery, and it helps us spit out a, a percent stated charge, allows us to easily say, okay, I might be at 70%, it's kept track of it, and it says, hey, you're at 40%, even though your voltage is still pretty similar. So um, this is just a good visual to show you the difference in the voltage profiles between the two chemistries. Well, and I think you also touched on why would you go from lead acid or AGM to lithium, right? Yeah, so, um, you know, going from a lead acid or an AGM battery setup to lithium is going to give you some advantages. Uh, continue on with the 12 volt or uh, residential fridge. Um, one, the, the lithium battery can be used up to 100% of its capacity if needed. Um, generally, you like to do the 80% range, but if you're at a pinch, just last night a boondocking emergency situation, you can pull that thing down to 100, all the way down to zero, put it back in a charge the next day, and have no issues. So, okay. um, you get better, you get about twice as much energy out of a lithium battery as you do a lead acid or an AGM battery. So what you're saying that a really basic upgrade somebody could do is just go from one lead acid to one lithium, and kind of double your capacity, right? Yes, you can. I would say that if you have a travel trailer, um, if you, for the most part, are just trying to go from point A to point B and plug into a campground, you're trying to keep your fridge going by going down the road in a travel trailer, you could get by with a single 12 volt 100. That's assuming you are exclusively camping at campgrounds electricity. If you're okay. trying to do any type of off-grid or even an overnight a harvest host in a travel trailer, you want to be a 12 volt 200 amp hour battery bank. Okay. Um, that's just the minimum. That's That'll get through, keep your fridge running, you're not having any issues the next morning you wake up based on all of our experience and, and customer feedback. On a fifth wheel, um, you definitely want to, as a minimum starting point, is 12 volt 200 amp hours um, in any situation, even driving down the road, keeping that fridge going from point A to point B. So that is kind of a good guidance there for just this, the uh, quick upgrade to lithium from lead acid or AGM. So kind of like you were saying like with the gauge of wiring uh -huh. always have bigger like more amp hours yeah. are better than cutting it too close because you never know when you end up driving longer than you thought you were and you don't want you know your refrigerator to yeah. shut down. I think the um, exactly you know upsizing is always good. Um, I think the other thing is in a lithium battery, since it has all this usable energy, it also sits at a higher voltage. Your appliances, your electronics run more efficiently and they're healthier. Um, so you're saying the, probably the most basic upgrade then would be to just add two 100 amp hour lithium batteries and that's going to be a nice basic upgrade. Yep. 
uh, anybody that's in travel trailer fifth wheel, you're just looking, you know, just pulled off a lot, had your, your RV for one or two years trying to upgrade. 200 amp hours is going to be that turnkey solution. Whether you do it with two 12 volt 100s wired in parallel, or you get one of our 12 volt 200s, either option, they're basically the exact same performance. Uh, sometimes size and fit come down to, to the play. Um, okay, so you have a 200 amp hour battery as well. Yes, yeah, we do. Okay. We do. Um, I will say that, you know, a few people uh, opt for two 100s uh, for redundancy or, you know, you know, a couple guys that are, you know, uh, motorcycle guys off grid, they'll take another battery and use it for another application, bring it back. So it gives them some versatility, but uh, okay. either option. Um, but yeah, we have a 12200, which fits really nice into the double battery box in the front of uh, most travel trailers. Um, okay. So there's a Camco double, uh, double battery box that'll fit our 12200 perfectly. Uh, it's really nice there. And thanks to Harrison, Enduro Power Batteries is giving all of you guys 5% off your RV lithium batteries. So if you've been dreaming of a lithium battery upgrade or you've got to upgrade them just to even get out this camping season, make sure you scan this QR code right over here or there will be a link in the description and the pinned comment. Let's get back into the video. All right, so let's talk about parallel connections. Um, here we have an example of a balanced uh, parallel connection and an unbalanced parallel connection. So let's dive in and look what we have. So we have three 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries uh, in parallel that gives us 12 volt, 300 amp hours. That is the case in both of these examples. As you can see, there's slightly different wiring in what's going on. So we have battery number one here, battery number two, battery number three. And you'll see on the positive, uh, the load positive connects to battery number one. So load positive would be all your existing cables from your RV. And then you have your positive, 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 positive. And down here you have your negative, 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 which is your parallel connection. Um, and then over here we have our load negative from the RV uh, touching into the battery bank here. So our load positive and our load negative are on opposite ends of the string of batteries. This will allow us to have a balanced flow of energy through the battery bank, thus keeping the battery healthier over time. Um, as opposed to down here, in this scenario, we have the exact same three batteries uh, wired in parallel, positive, positive, negative, negative, all the way through, but you can see the load positive and the load negative are both on battery number one. What's gonna ha happen here is battery number one is going to charge and discharge at a much greater rate than battery two and definitely battery three. So over time, these batteries are going to um, become unbalanced and wear differently. And we're talking about months and years down the road, so you're not going to notice any of these issues out of the gate, um, but the longevity of the battery, the investment that you have into your lithium battery bank, you want it to last as long as possible. So proper wiring is very important when you're thinking about parallel connection. So if you are doing um, a daisy chain connection of uh, batteries, uh, the proper way to parallel connect is this balanced example here uh, versus the unbalanced version here. The last thing I'd like to point out uh, on this, which doesn't really have anything to do with parallel connections per se, but when we are working with lithium battery banks, it is very highly recommended to have a battery monitor with a shunt. This allows you to see the accurate percentage state of charge or 100 percent SOC of the battery bank. You do that by adding, putting in a battery monitor with a shunt. A shunt sits here on the negative cable uh, leaving the battery bank. The reason we have this here is when you install this, you want all your load cables. A lot of times there's multiple cables coming from your RV to your battery. So in this case, we're only showing one cable, but there might be three cables. We want all of those that were previously on your battery bank to land on the load only side of the shunt and then you'll have one single cable from the battery only side of the shunt to the battery. What this allows us to do is to accurately measure all the current flowing in and out of, in and out of the battery bank um, to get that accurate battery monitoring. So um, in both these examples, we have the shunt, they're both installed. Um, so just want to kind of walk that through with you. But again, uh, a balanced is a much happier battery bank over time than an unbalanced battery bank. What we have here in front of us are all parallel connections and they're all acceptable. Um, and the reason they're all acceptable is the way they're wired. They all have their positives to positives, negatives to negatives, and then they have their load coming off of battery one, 
and uh, the positive, the load negative come up battery four in this case. Uh, but we're going to talk about two other ways to do a 12 volt, 400 amp hour setup that we have here uh, in two other configurations. Um, and there would be reasons why you would choose one over the other. So, for example, is when we get over 300 amp hours, we're starting to look at 400 amp hours or more, we want to start considering how we're wiring that battery bank together. So in this case, you can imagine we have four, if we had six, eight or so, you have this long chain of batteries going on. So there's smarter ways to do that. The first way to do it is obviously go into larger size batteries. So in case 12 volt 400 amp hours here, we could do the same thing with two 12 volt 200 amp hour batteries. Again, wire the exact same way, but you only have two batteries in the string. This is going to be a much healthier and more balanced battery bank over time because you just have two batteries the energy is flowing through um, versus four, where at some point when you make this six or eight, even though it's wired this way, it's properly and it'll work, the ones in the middle just are not going to wear the same way as batteries on the ends are. So that way we want to upgrade into a larger battery and have fewer batteries in our battery bank. Um, so we always say the fewer physical batteries in the battery bank, the healthier it is going to be over time. That's this example. The other example we have here is what we call the bus bar method. Um, so in this case, we're taking the same 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries we had here, and instead of uh, daisy chaining them all together in parallel, we're going to take the positive and negatives up to a positive bus bar and a negative bus bar. Each of these batteries have those cables going up, they're all the same length, and then from here, you have your load positives and negatives coming in. Um, this will keep all those batteries very balanced because um, you, you're not daisy chaining through each battery to get to it. They're going to one common spot. That energy is coming in and out and evenly dispersing through the whole battery bank on that bus bar. Um, this is great too if you have to have even more batteries than that as well. So to recap, these are uh, parallel options for a 400 amp hour battery bank. They're all acceptable, um, but as we walk through, um, in some cases, some might be better than others. Um, most notably, if you're looking at 400 amp hours, upgrading into two 200 amp hours um, will be probably a healthier battery bank for you over time. So the best practice for the average person just adding lithium into their RV, um, not doing massive upgrades to inverters and adding on solar, they just want all the, the great qualities of adding in lithium battery with the low maintenance and stuff, is uh, again, the, the battery choice, the converter, which is your onboard charger, and then adding in a battery monitor with a shunt. Um, so these are what those components look like. Obviously this is a 12 300 amp hour battery. Your system might be a single 12 100, uh, multiple batteries, depending on what that solution is for you. Um, give us a call, shoot us an email. We can definitely help you out in uh, getting you in the right direction for the right size battery bank. As far as the converter goes, this unit here is a good example of what we call a deck mount converter. This is commonly found in fifth wheels and many other uh, larger sized RVs, class A's. We use these as well. Um, come in a couple different options, but they have lithium upgrades uh, available today. We have those uh, from uh, available as well. And the last thing is the battery monitor with a shunt. And uh, the shunt is really important to measure. Um, we're measuring voltage over this. Uh, we're doing our initial setup with it and telling it, hey, we've got a certain size battery being hooked up to it. But ultimately the shunt is measuring the current. The energy that flows in and out of the battery crosses over this and it's able to capture that. So it takes those three bits of information and it spits out a percentage for us. So, hey, my battery's at 100%. You're now at 88%, you're at 62 you just recharge, you're back to 100%. It takes away all the guessing, you don't have to look at voltage anymore. Um, the other nice thing about having a shunt is whether you have a display like this that you're looking, that you've mounted inside, you know, flush mount, uh, it's very convenient. Um, you know, a model like this, the Victron Energy BMV 712, also has a very nice uh, app. It's a really nice user-friendly app where you can open up, see the percent state of charge. You can see the actual current um, that you're drawing out of your system. Go turn on a light switch. You'll see that your light switch in the hall is using one amp per hour. So something like a shunt makes you very smart, educates you on your power consumption. And especially if you have goals of going off grid or staying longer off grid, having a shunt in place will definitely 
allow you to educate yourself and become smarter. So again, three best practices, battery uh, swap out to lithium uh, compatible converter, and then adding a battery monitor with a shunt. So those are the, the best practices. Um, again, if you're just getting into lithium, something around this is what you're looking at. Um, price wise, just for you guys out there, uh, you know, we're anywhere from like in the mid 200s to 300 depending on the model every rv is slightly different most fifth wheels are pretty much the same thing when you get into travel trailers you get into class b c's there's different units we can help you out with that and then a battery monitor a shunt like this fully featured from victron will run about 206 dollars uh to get you into the system okay awesome well thanks so much yeah, for coming out here definitely. today and again we've got a big install going on today so subscribe so you catch that video and actually we'll link over here to our other rv lithium videos right now so check them out